Inside Production. Scotland, 1840. John Boyd Dunlop was born on a farm in Dreghorn, North Ayrshire, and studied to be a veterinary surgeon at a Dick Vet University of Edinburgh. He was only 19. Apart from being a veterinary surgeon, Dunlop developed the pneumatic tyre for his son's tricycle and soon had them made commercially in Scotland. A cyclist using his tyres began to win all races and drew the attention of Harvard de Cross. He sold his rights to the mnemonic tires to a company he formed with the president of the Irish Cyclist Association, Harvard de Cross, for a small cash sum and a small shareholding in their mnemonic tire business. Dunlop withdrew in 1896. Oh. We are at the first hole of Georgia Fell Charles, formerly VG Airport. Built in 1916, it stems two kilometers in length. Thousands of tires have gracefully greased this runway, but with holding, hard pounding. Without the pneumatic tire, air travel would have been virtually impossible. We wouldn't get an aircraft off the ground, much more for landing comfortably. Fast car racing would not have become a reality. And our online shopping experience would have been a nightmare without our trucks being able to transport our cargoes. What caused Dunlop to create the pneumatic tire? Dunlop once actually just wanted to make more comfortable. As the saying goes, necessity is the mother of invention. Actually, solid rubber tires. Too uncomfortable, thought John Boyd Dunlop, and in 1888, promptly invented the pneumatic tire. His son was the first to try out the new, more comfortable feel of motoring. So, what is the pneumatic tire? To explain more, we go from the world of black and white into a Dunlop animation. The solid rubber wing gets replaced by a tube so that it will last a while and not slip down. It gets covered in a cotton material. Already the wheel has a cushioning effect. Then comes a rubber coating with a fabric layer vulcanized into it. This made the tire less susceptible to damage. Important in an area of poor roads and horseshoe nails left dangerously lying around.
to the delight of motoring enthusiasts, it was now also possible to drive faster. Motor racing boomed, but the tube tires were not really suited to high-speed racing. The tire designers needed a rethink. New wheel rims and compounds let them dispense with the tube, the carcass being sealed from within. It was a license to go full throttle. For it was the stability and durability achieved this way that made the legendary endurance races and lap records of the 30s at all possible. Daredevils like Caracciola and Lang were already doing speeds of over 270 kilometers per hour with no helmet or overalls. We know about the credibility, durability, and the performance of the Dunlop tag. But let us hear from our experts. Here with me is Christian Lang, speed racer with Lang Motorsports. Christian, tell us, how is it racing with the Dunlop tag? Here for us a little bit uh, strange now, but we, we drive here with Dunlop tires now. We do it no time in Germany with Dunlop. And the guys from Dunlop was very good with them, work together. They give um, us their experience and now we are very happy with the setup from the car now and um, yeah, I think we are look positive in the race. Now we'll hear from Jade Handy, who's racing with a tyre other than the Dunlop. Jade, tell us, how is it racing with the tyre model you have chosen? I'm just back from a session. It was pretty difficult because there's a lot of rubber sticking to the track and I think something's wrong with the tires and the brake manifold. I therefore had to come back into the pits after just half an hour. Now it's my teammate's turn. We'll see if she has the same problems. Thanks Jade and good luck. Augusta Parfos from Need for Speed Schubert is our next expert. Augusta is now ahead in the competition and is slated to take home the title. Augusta, tell us, how is it going? Yeah, it was okay. Uh, we are trying to, to save the car, we are trying to, to keep everything together. It's still a very long race, so uh, it doesn't mean a lot to, be, to lead the race at this stage. There you have it. Thanks for tuning in. Caden James saying Godspeed. This is seven. The occurrence of hydroplaning may bring devastating results. In 2007, an Airbus A340, flying as an Air France from Paris to Toronto, crashed after landing due to a subsequent thunderstorm. It hydroplaned over standing water on the runway and skidded into a ravine. On December 22, 2009, an American airline, Boeing 737, landed at the Norman Manley Airport in Kingston and overshoot the runway as a result of hydroplaning. The plane landed, it touched the ground, it actually touched down, we felt it, and all the passengers started clapping because we thought that the plane had actually, we thought that the plane had actually landed, it land, it did land, it touched the ground and we clapped the way Jamaicans always do. And then we just felt a big crash, all the lights went off and we felt the big impact and we realized that the plane had crashed. The fuselage broke in three places, one wing was broken and the landing gear tossed to one side of the aircraft, an engine also fell off. I am Gleason Cooper, reporting live from InterScience Television Studio. Today we'll be talking about Don Love's creation and the science that drives the process. The grooves in the rubber of the tire is so designed to expel water from beneath. This will prevent hydroplaning. What is hydroplaning? Hydroplaning occurs when water gets between the tire and the road surface, leaving unexistent forces. This will cause the car to slide. Friction is when two objects move over each other. There is two forces to be considered. Kinetic frictional force and static. Kinetic is the force in action, while static is the force that is needed to start the object. We will further get details from the expert, Jason Plato. Aquaplaning is, uh, is where the, the, the water will just lift the front wheels off the ground. Um, you know, it happens if, if, if there's been a lot, a lot, a lot of rain, there's standing water like puddles, 
um, it's not a nice experience. Just lifts the front tyres off the ground so you can't steer. Uh, doesn't happen too often. The inner contours really cut into the water, forcing it to the outside, where it's then quickly channeled away. And this is where the tyre meets the road. Thanks for watching.